Okay, we're ready to roll. Okay, folks, we'll get started. Uh, Mayor Poirier is not available. Um, uh, he's at the uh, opening for the uh, Community Justice Center, so I'm in the chair today. Um, we'll start by calling the meeting to order, and I'll ask for the blessing and land acknowledgement. And on your program, it says me, but since I'm here, Councillor Koch is going to do that. So, Councillor Koch. As we gather, we recognize that we are on Treaty 3 lands which are steeped in rich Indigenous history and home to many First Nations and Métis people today. We continue to be thankful for the partnerships with Indigenous people. We give thanks for the many blessings we enjoy in the city of Kenora. We seek wisdom in our minds, clearness in our thinking, truth in our speaking, and always love in our hearts so that we may try always to unite the citizens of Kenora. Let these principles guide us in our decision making. Thanks, Councillor Koch. And uh, carrying on down the agenda, uh, public information notices, and I see we have none. Uh, declaration of pecuniary interest and uh, the general nature thereof. Um, I don't think so. Uh, pertain to any of the following items on today's agenda or uh, from a meeting at which a member was not in attendance. Do we have anybody with a pecuniary interest? Seeing none, um, we'll, uh, we'll get into the uh, the agenda. So, uh, number one on the uh, um, subject here is municipal accommodation tax review. So, I'll turn that over to Stace. Or that'd be me. Okay, floor is yours. Thanks. Good afternoon, Council. Um, I know that as part of your orientation process, uh, Kyle would have walked you through a fairly extensive deck on Matt. So, my goal is not to uh, repeat things that he said there, but I do want to touch on a couple of things that as it relates to Matt because uh, Matt is often confused by the ratepayers that uh, when we do these projects that it's actually tax levy that is going to these projects when in fact it is Matt. Okay, so what is the municipal accommodation tax affectionately known as Matt? It is a, um, it's a tax on, that is levied on hotel rooms, uh, motel rooms and bed and breakfast in Kenora. So on every bill, uh, people that are staying at those spaces, at places will get a 4% levy, which is called the Municipal Accommodation Tax. Uh, that uh, revenue is uh, collected uh, from these organizations. It comes back to our finance department. And uh, you know we do great work in the economic development and tourism space with this uh, revenue. Um, it was funded initially, or it started initially in Q4 of 2018. Um, and in uh, early 2019, when I started here, uh, it was new. Uh, and it was a good thing for the city because historically economic development and tourism was really grossly underfunded. So now we had this new revenue source. And what we did in 2019, at that time we had the Economic Development Commission, uh, that there was three uh, council representatives uh, on that uh, board and then we had uh, uh, Councillor Chase and Councillor Koch and a few others uh, were on that board. We had a planning session, very similar to what we're going to do today. And with that, we sort of started with what we thought was going to be our budget. Uh, we took a conservative estimate and we started to talk about projects that we thought that would be good in terms of advancing both tourism and economic development in uh, Kenora. So we're actually going to be going through a very similar exercise today because it works very well. Uh, just a few couple of highlights. So we started, as I said, in 2018. Since that time, net of our contribution to Kenora Hospitality Alliance, uh, the city would have received uh, approximately $1.2 million over that period of time. Uh, for this year, uh, net of the KHA expense, we anticipate that we have a budget of approximately $700,000. And we've, again, always taken a very conservative approach to things. Uh, looking into 2023 and prior to coming to Council, uh, we had a planning session uh, like we would have every other uh, year. Uh, we had invited uh, all members of the KHA, Kenora Hospitality Alliance, to be part of that uh, planning session. Uh, they sent their senior person uh, to sort of be the voice of that group. Um, before you on the walls are uh, all of the uh, 
objectives uh, in the five-year economic development and tourism strategy. Again, we started this in 2018. We didn't have that plan back then. And we published that plan in June of 2021. Sorry. So as we go through this exercise today, I've, I've put these here because it's very important that the projects kind of land in one of these areas. So you're actually going to be asked to do that. Um, and when we did our planning session, not to get into the real granular details, but I can do it at a high level in terms of where we've got projects right now and approximate budgets that we have for there, uh, for them. And then of course, we're gonna take your input today and then we're gonna see how it shakes out and how we can cluster things. And then we'll come back to, uh, to council with a sort of a, an overview of what we su would suggest in the various areas and what the spend should be. So in terms of the objective of the enhanced uh, four season experience, uh, we've got approximately a hundred thousand dollar contribution, 50 going to Mount Evergreen and 50 going uh, to the uh, lighting of the Nordic trails. Uh, why that money is important to those organizations is they can take that money and they can lever it. So when they go to NOHFC or another funding organization, they get multiples on our contributions. We also have uh, $20,000 allocated to Science North so that we can bring back some of their traveling road exhibits. Uh, under supporting Kenora's development as a destination for arts, culture, and heritage, Josh and I are meeting with new staff later this week to talk about uh, their, um, their strategic plan, uh, their embedded uh, objective within that strategic plan to enhance their marketing and what we can do to support them. So we don't have a number there yet, but uh, that's one of the things that we're going to do. Another one of the objectives is to improve lake access use and boating infrastructure through our success with NOHFC. We've got $2.28 million going into two projects, the parking lot at the uh, rec center and all the docking projects. In addition, we would be funding the Coney Island shuttle. Under the objective of advancing Kenora's position as a host community for special events, this is something that we started last year. So we have a $25,000 reserve built as of last year, and the goal is to contribute to that again this year through the MAC tax. And what that allows us to do is develop a kitty so that we can kind of buy events uh, that we can have here, and we would do those targeted at the shoulder season. In terms of uh, the objective of activating uh, development of Kenora's vacant land uh, and underutilized lands, we've got a twenty or thirty thousand dollar contribution earmarked towards the investment attraction project. Uh, reminding council that that, would, if successful, that would be a three hundred thousand dollar project for the economic development space. Stacey, can I pause you for a sec? Sure. Councilor Moncrief had a question. I'm Councilor? sorry. Are you the lake access two point two eight million? Yep. You didn't say what the. Uh, contribution was from the MAT tax? Um, there was actually nothing from the MAT tax other than the Coney Island shuttle as part of that. Okay. Good counselor. <coughs> Good there, counselor, on grief? Yeah, okay. thanks. Carry on, Chase, or uh, Stace. No, sure. it's okay. <laughs> Under the uh, investment attraction um, uh, category, uh, support the growth and retention of local business and emerging sector. Uh, we've got allocations in 2023 related to uh, Keep It in Kenora program, the open streets market, and a housing forum as well. Um, under the objective of tourism and economic foundations, uh, the objective is support indigenous partnerships in tourism and economic investment in Kenora. We've got $15,000 allocated towards undertaking a uh, developing programming and bringing it to Kenora uh, to expose um, uh, local residents and tourists to uh, Indigenous uh, content. And finally, oh no, there's two more. Under undertaking planning activities that support tourism and economic development, um, we've got $85,000 allocated towards various marketing campaigns to bring new people uh, or have people come back to Kenora. And then uh, again, that investment attraction project. And finally, uh, develop and invest in infrastructure that supports economic growth and tourism. We've got a project approximately $100,000 into a number of different projects, uh, which include a new rink for the white cap. We've got, got a contribution towards the pocket park. Uh, we've got some work to be completed at uh, McLeod Park, additional Christmas lighting, uh, a travel stop at the Discovery Center, and an expansion of the um, disc golf from eight, uh, nine holes to 18 holes, uh, as that's gonna be part of the Manitoba uh, disc golf um, program or tour, I guess. So, 
Another question here, Stace. Sure. So, Councilor Moncrief, go ahead. So, all of these are listed under 2020, most of them under 2022 projects. So, is these are all projects that we would have identified for 2023. So, here's we're going to go through the exercise with Council today. So, these are just earmarked right now. So, we did this planning session with KHA. We, we looked at a bunch of different projects that we might want to bring forward in 2023. This is a summary of what that short list is right now. We're going to do this planning session with council today. Then we're gonna take that all back and then we're gonna meld that information together. And then we're gonna come back to council with what we would suggest for 2020. So we were given a list that's called MAP Projects 2022 with what was budgeted for them in 2022. Okay. And some of these are listed. I'm just trying to figure out what we're doing. Some, some of them carry into subsequent years just because of the type of project that they would be. So um, th that came in the package that came from Kyle, is that correct? Yes. Okay. So, okay. So there's a whole bunch of those projects that were 2022, some of them completed, some of them didn't, some of them will carry into uh, 2023. A perfect example would be the um, event attraction uh, thing. It's a multi-year uh, contribution, no different than what we did with the, um, uh, the, the automated washing that we purchased. We put it in a couple of years to minimize the financial sting of doing it in any one year. Okay. So uh, in terms of our agenda today, uh, just we just went through the introduction, um, uh, talked about some of the stuff that we're going to be doing in 2023 with Council's blessing. Um, you were asked to do some homework, okay, which was to identify uh, three or four projects that you thought were important. Um, what I'd like you to do right now is to take that worksheet that you would have completed and just fill out what those projects are on individual stickies. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I don't have any homework. Okay. Uh, everybody got homework on? December. December 23rd. Oh. <laughs> At Christmas. Be, oh, oh, enough. I'm, uh, I agree with Constable. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, we can take some time. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> so. It's okay, guys. I got a project. <laughs> 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 So maybe what we can do right now is for those of you who have uh, done your homework, I feel like a teacher, uh, take your projects and put them on the, on the big stickies. One project per sticky, okay? And then for those of you that have not done projects, have a look at these categories and identify three or four projects that you think are going to advance economic development or tourism in Kenora. And what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of place them on the objectives to make sure that they line up. And then we're going to have you come up and present your projects. So that way, like, we, we have things in our mind in terms of what, what we're thinking, but sometimes we articulate it a little more clearer so somebody will go, ah, oh, I'll get it. And then after that, we're going to have an open forum where we ask questions and that sort of thing. And then uh, we're going to do a voting exercise to help us prioritize. So. Take 15 minutes right now to either transfer your projects or to write projects which you think uh, might enhance things here. Okay, is everybody good with that? Any questions or? Okay. And happy to answer questions at any time. Sorry for being delinquent. That's okay. Just give This isn't, you know, this is most from over a month. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, and then this is just, this is straight out of the chart. Yeah. Yeah. Tourism and extracts. Yeah. 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 What do you need? Will it print on the network if I just print it? You should have a print. I don't know if you have that. Just or forward it to me and I'll print it. Like, what are you trying to print? The homework? Yeah. Okay. None of that is. I could have sent out a reminder. Sorry. No, I'm just saying. Budget. Is it? Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't explain that. So there's no way for us to know. That's all we're yeah. So, so it looks like this is what you did in 2022. We're starting to do this later. 
So that's where my confusion was, and this is just what it's going to come for. I don't know which, where do I get it? Yeah, so oh, Andrew's back. Is that's what I'm going to do. So that's what I need. Yeah. Basically, it's going to be awesome. Oh, I can imagine. It's going to be going on. Because this is, this is, yeah. Yeah. This is yeah. 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 Just look for the book. I just bought it back for that name. We're just doing that. Yeah. 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 These are just the projects that we identified in yeah. the So some of them might make sense. They might not be all together. They might be. Yeah. 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 I'm usually yeah. the one yeah. yeah. talking. Yeah. I feel badly. You know, I should have sent out a reminder. So well, I those objectives in the wall. You could have given myself a reminder. <laughs> this, was, this was clearly a please get this done before Christmas. You know. Okay. Um. Still doing our homework, Lisa. You gotta wait. <laughs> Did you send the cup? Is it from you? Yeah, I just forwarded it. Okay. Oh, did you? Okay, good. But when I unplug, sometimes I get a new box stuff. So just give me a second. Okay. I, I can I see, see it's it. in the air box result there. I don't want to. I'm gonna probably get. Uh, I got it now. Better get my card there. Hi, Andrew. Hi, Josh. Hey. Still going strong over there. Oh, I got it. I can go up How's it looking there? How many copies do you want? Yeah. Uh, I guess just do seven. Just because. Yeah. These are the flow. Oh, sure. Sorry. Sure. We don't want to wait for everyone. Oh, good. Yeah. Can you get everybody Just if everybody wants to pause for a second, uh, Megan was just going to explain something. Yes. Yeah, so there's a bunch of colors on the sheet. So. Um, as Stace mentioned, the 2023 MAP projects are a result of a similar planning session that we would have done with our internal staff group. So this is the short list that we've come up with. Um, the first four that you see at the top, starting with annual marketing allocation, those are ones that are typically allocated every year. So those are annual contributions um, that we identify. Um, please ignore the blue beside annual marketing allocation. That shouldn't be blue. Um, but the three that are highlighted blue below, um, those ones are like partnership um, contributions. So those are going towards uh, larger projects with their flow through contributions. Um, the projects that are identified in orange are um, things that we, we really need to do. Like we have commitments to moving ahead with these, um, these small pieces. Uh, in 2023 and then uh, the three that are highlighted in yellow um, when we when we went through this planning session we came up with a big list of projects we identified quite a number of different strategies or different plans and so uh, part of the conversation that we had at a very high level was like how much capacity do we have internally to do all of these things and so the three that are highlighted in yellow are the ones where we were like these are really great, we love these projects, but we just don't know if we have the capacity to deliver them in 2023 alongside everything else. Right. So um, that is what the yellow bars mean. Thank you very much. Yeah, we kept every single project on the list. We wanted to involved. So this would have been the short list that the city staff and KJ came up with collectively back in October. Great, thanks. So Coney Island Shuttle is in the Browns was committed. Yeah, it's yeah. an annual okay. an annual thing. It was a four-year contract. Or Brownie is committed. Or 
Yeah. 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 Great, thanks. So just one more question. You yeah. said seven hundred thousand, but in fact it says eight fifty here. So what's the difference? Did we just find money? So so we annually have to contribute one hundred and forty three, roughly one hundred and forty. It, it depends on the ten year rolling average of the criminal hospitality lines. So they were an existing destination marketing organization prior I to this. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. So basically we have to make them whole and then the remaining amount comes back to the city of Okay. So it's not eight fifty. It's not eight fifty. So that's okay. that's the starting balance and then we have you can see there's an expense of one hundred and forty three in there for the KJ. So it's roughly seven hundred. Thanks. <coughs> That meant what? It, so it was, it, they were projects that we identified that, I did. that people thought were a priority, but we just didn't know if we would have staff capacity to okay. deliver. Okay. So they're on the list. But there's so no if they're on the list, you know, they're going to stay on the list? Or yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah and this list, list too is just very much in draft. Like yeah. these were all of the ones that we came up with, so very much in draft. Yeah. Okay. So when you're ready, if you want to just place uh, your ideas for projects in the objective category where it fits. What does trail counters mean? Those, those are uh, counters that we use to, uh, it actually counts as somebody goes by, yeah, oh. it's a traffic. Oh, thank you. So I think uh, Councillor Brady had a question about the, the tennis courts and number of people using the tennis courts. Oh, yeah. so we could utilize something like that to monitor the gate okay. to, to track how many people. Where's it's very portable. And where's that here? It's trail counters. Gotcha. Okay. To answer your question, Councillor Moncrief, about finding some money, we actually did because, again, when we would have gone through this exercise in 2022, we would have assumed a certain amount of revenue. Our revenue was actually higher than uh, what we would have thought. So two, that's two things. Number one, you have a carry forward balance that comes in 2023. Plus, you know that your revenue is going to be higher in 2023 because of your yeah. training in 2022, which had some COVID in it, right? So, right. So even with declaring all the So two things. I love this little Yeah. So yeah. So two things. Uh, the hotels increased their rates, and the volume has started to come back as well. So it's worked in our favor. How many are we supposed to do? I don't know. How many ideas do you have? So you're just using these ideas, correct? Well, no, I don't know. These are their ideas. Well, I don't know. No, if you have ideas, you lump them into the appropriate mm. okay. objective, I guess. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, maybe they're picked up on some of the other projects that we're already already identified. Well, one was like a kitchen, but sure. Yeah. More than two up there. I have four. As many as you want, right? Careful. We should try to limit the uh, ideas to four just to be fair to everyone, otherwise, um, yeah. <laughs> up, up to four. Who doesn't have four? Go run around the building and come back yeah. inside.
another five minutes. One category's got no love there. <laughs> I see that. Lose it. It's really the role of the Northwestern Business Center as well as economic development, that category, so as long as we're resourcing.
$20,379. Okay, and then we've proposed <laughs> another 20000 for next year as well, yeah. or this year, sorry. So we're moving in the right direction because that's almost $60,000 of lighting uh, in two years. So that's... Downtown still didn't look festive enough in my books the way we used to do downtown. Um, the other thing is, Anishinaabe brought up the idea of a, a light trail. You drive and there's light stuck around. It was kind of what we started at the harbor front and it kind of died away. And on the Greenbelt, people miss the stuff on the Greenbelt. They know it's a pain in the ass to do. Yeah, but one, of the, one of the things that happened was um, through the downtown revitalization, so you'll notice that there's a, uh, pedestals, electrical pedestals. Yeah. So for us to even do the lights this year, how many of those uh, pedestals did we have to replace? Was it 30 to 40? Yeah, so it was a big undertaking just to get ready to do that. So you need power there, which can be a challenge. No better drivers. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Councillor. Uh, who would like to go next? Councillor Chase. <laughs> go go All right. A little too much sugar. Uh, the first project that I wanted to support was a cross town corridor for snowmobiles. Um, so studying that, seeing how viable that is, I think there's a big opportunity for our tourism in the winter season to bring some of the traffic through town. If you're familiar with the trail, the trail does not go through the city, it goes around the city. And uh, there's a lot of uh, like, opportunities to come to Kanar to visit our restaurants and hotels. And I think it would be a very good thing to enhance that business. That's the question. Mm -hmm. So would you see them coming in uh, by the marina in Cameron Bay and then coming the back way through? Because you can come the lake side, but you can't come through the back side. I don't know how to get over the water. <laughs> like how, where, where the was well, there, the there would be two bridges okay. required. And we, well, we actually have the old bridge that went to the top of the pavilion uh, in storage right now. But I asked about that a long time ago, and someone said it had been uh, disassembled. Well, it's cut into pieces. You can always weld it back together, right? Yeah. Specifically for that question, I asked where it was. That's interesting. Huh? It, exi okay. it exists. Okay. Um, the next idea I had was about activating developing underutilized or vacant lands. So the piece that speaks to me the most is municipally known. It's referred to as the Highway to Heaven piece in Kuwait. It's quite a large acreage on the uh, west boundary, sort of between the East and Supporters Road. It also has a bit of a right of way or strip of land that goes down to the water, so it does touch the lake and could be an access point uh, for development. Um, in terms of uses or ideas there, obviously a higher and better use is probably something commercial in the, in the hotel space or perhaps something a little lower budget capital wise from the private sector would be maybe an RV park, a private sector RV park of some kind. Um, I think if there were changes to be made uh, at Anishinaabe Park, uh, that there's still a lot of demand and usefulness of having a good campground and RV site, and that area is forested, it's sort of off the highway, you don't get a lot of noise because it's elevation, and the views of the lake from there are unreal, and you have access off Mackenzie Park or Fire Room 2 to get to it, so you have sort of an inner and out. So that's just uh, an idea, um, and if we were ever looking at um, bringing services down the west corridor or highway, it might be a natural spot to pick up some services for sewer water along the way to develop. So just a way to create some synergy. Um, and that sort of left me going to expanding the Shinabi Park. I mean, again, when I look at the amount of land that's there, um, I, I know in terms of serviced RV sites that have enough power to run air conditioning <coughs> and some of the bigger motorhome style uh, tour buses. There's not a lot of spots at Nish. There's a huge campground in Mongolia Lake that's not on the water. I think there's a market for that. I think there's a lot of people that end up parking illegally against our bylaws at the Walmart parking lot that if they could, they would like to be at Nish, but there's no hookups so it's full because we're always at capacity. So I think studying, uh, looking at, again, it's not something that we operate. We have a third party operator, um, but if it fits into their business model and it's, it's viable, it might be worthwhile investing in expanding that part for that service, or changing the location to Highway Hub. Um, and then the other project I had, and this is something we talked about during the 2018 uh, NAT review when we were at the commission, um, the first developing and investing infrastructure to support economic growth, um, is that like, there be a study done to put a boat lift or a lock system between the lake and the river. I think that long term, that's a huge capital expense. There's obviously ongoing operating needs to run that type of a piece of infrastructure, but it would enhance the values on the Winnipeg River, assessments would go up, property taxes uh, can potentially go up, 
and it just connects that to the, those two bodies of water which historically used to be connected and aren't anymore, I think, as an asset uh, to show off how unique this area is. Again, I'm still a big boating guy, you know, we're not the boating destination anymore, but it is still something that I believe in and I think a lot of people obviously come from all around the world to experience here that we can enhance, uh, enhance some value to the city. Thank you. Yeah. Heather, do you have a copy of the submissions that would have come in like a decade ago when they were looking at uh, options for the uh, the old boat lift? I don't know if we would still have that. I think we would have destroyed it. Okay. I can look at all those records in a disk scan, but I just have never seen anything like that. Yeah, I'd just be curious. It seemed to me that there was a tender process that went out where they asked the private sector to come forward yeah. with different ideas. <coughs> It was very costly. I do. Remember. I no. just remember that. Yeah. Yes. Um, thank you very much. <laughs> She's so excited. So good. Yeah. <laughs> very, very, uh, very different uh, vibes. <laughs> yeah. No, I designed stories. I didn't do my homework, and I yeah. just went in the middle of the middle school. Okay, so I did for sport indigenous participation in tourism. There's an organization called Indigenous Tourism Ontario. The City of Thunder Bay is a member of them. I think this is something we should look into. They are, let me read off their website so I see it. Uh, province's first and only dedicated Indigenous tourism organization, organization that focuses on uniting communities, Indigenous organizations, and industry leaders support the growth of Indigenous tourism. So I'm sure there could be some resources in there no, that maybe we could co-utilize. Um, and then I had under... Development and arts. I think there is an opportunity. I'm not sure in regards to some of our mural situations around town what the history was <coughs> of them. I think there's an opportunity for everyone's history to be represented in them. If there is, I mean, I understand these are private businesses, so I'm not really sure what <coughs> the feasibility is of that, but making sure that we are telling everyone's history when we're telling the history of um, Kenora. And these are just two small ones for enhancing Four Season Visitor. I think that um, Mount Evergreen could be used as a year-round destination. And Kimberley, which is in the Rocky Mountains where I grew up, we have uh, a big uh, mountain biking club that they use the ski hill for in the, in the summer months. And it's like a huge year-round tourism for that destination. And then I thought like a dedicated sledding hill because um, but anyways, I don't know, I kind of felt like the hill from King George down to the rec center or something. I always get people asking me with their kids, like, where do you go sledding? And there's sort of the hill, like, by the um, Baptist Church, but parking's kind of daisy there, and I don't think it's actually an official thing, but I thought maybe having an actual dedicated sledding hill, so that's it. You guys get to do this four times. So not anything. If you think of an idea after you leave, just email it in and we'll we'll make sure we share it. Can you add murals to the list? Because we had that on the list a couple of years ago. So there is a mural on this one. Okay. Councilor Walker? I just have one. Okay. Uh, it's on the water lake. What level is that? Oh. Um, I don't know. To your level? To your level. Lake access, blah, blah, blah. Take over and rehab the Thatcher Road boat launch on Black Sturgeon. Is that privately owned right now? No, nope. Evan Arnold's it and they want to get rid of it. They're not maintaining it. The uh, Black Sturgeon property owners maintain it with a volunteer group that goes there once a year to cut the brush along the sides of the road and throw down some gravel that they buy as cheap as they are, beg, borrow, or steal. And, uh, it's in great shape. The launch itself is in great shape. The road needs a bit of work, but it would allow for a public access to Black Sturgeon for day trippers and cottagers who need to launch their boat to get it to their dock. It, it's really like the only public access point. It's not signed. Like it's very difficult for people to find. It's hard to navigate. Yeah, that was going to be my question. So we don't have any city uh, facilitated boat launch no. on Black Street. We have no tons trip. of property yeah. that's uh, underused or not used. They have property as part of the subdivisions. They have to turn over lots on every subdivision. But that one's already developed. It's already boat launch, and the bar doesn't want it anymore. They don't want any part of it. So there's parking, there's right. like everything's there. Right. There's parking. Right. There's That's parking and there's nice. lots of space once you get down there, but getting down there's a challenge. And it would mean a lot to anyone who works with the bypass. Even, even the islanders and people with water access properties on the lake struggle every year to find the lake. It's a quick win. Yeah. That's the north of the bypass. Uh, 
and in town people Put like I've yeah, launched sure. kayaks there and, exactly. and there's no real other spot to do that yeah thank you very much I like that one uh, yeah. Okay. <coughs> you have a bonus. Yeah. I'm more than four. I only got two up here already. Eat it. Okay. Oh. Public meeting. Okay. I'm gonna say this, but it's already kind of been said. It's just um, yeah, social community art related to the indigenous piece. Uh, I like. I really want to paint our crosswalks. That would be nice. And, um, oh yeah, let's bring like. He did the community art justice center one, and it's beautiful. Um, and just like installations, kind of like we did the monkeys on me, those kinds of things. I think would be nice to do again, uh, and kind of in an ongoing way. Um, and, um, I have a bonus one onto my other one, um, <clears throat> which is a sort of a brainchild of RCAO, but he's giving me the props for it. No. Um, <laughs> it's an arts and culture master plan. Um, because I think all the stuff kind of, like all the stuff we're talking about is, kind of links into it in a lot of ways. Uh, I know that there's an appetite from LOAC, uh, arts groups in the community who are asking for this kind of stuff. They want to know, like, I mean, you may have read one of the questions in the campaign period was, what are counselors' thoughts on making our city more arts friendly? And I forget what all the responses were, but, um, I think it would be a good tool for, for future planning uh, and worth some time and energy looking into that so that it's always something we focus on. Good. Thank you. Kyle had come up with an idea before, which was there's a city in Japan or something where they paint the manual covers. Yeah. Is that what it was? Very impressive artwork. They also yeah. have to paint all of our fire hydrants like little so people in that's, Kimberly. So yeah, that's, 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 that's funny. funny. Still, that's still trash <laughs> Where are the tacky police? Come on, people. Less is more. I had one thing, sorry, for just any of the art pieces. The, if we're going to do any indigenous art pieces, we should be doing them in consultation. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, like it has to be done. Yeah, just so you know, and everything that we do, um, like if we're looking at translations and things like that, uh, and the, uh, the Peace Park is a perfect example where we're making sure that we're getting local uh, engagement for that to make sure that we're actually translating proper, properly because different communities have very different dialects. So we just want to make sure that we're capturing it properly. Go ahead. The, I know we talked about it before, but the pieces that were on the bridge, the old yeah, yeah, no, I, I know the ones. We still have them. I don't know where that left off. Um, it was with Lori Nelson and her um, Indigenous advisory. Committee, advisory committee that was uh, through the museum. So yeah. that happened right before COVID, and then yeah. they were meeting regularly and having regular meetings. And then it uh, yeah, maybe we'll pause that discussion. I know that it was part of the potential McLeod Park. Um, no, no. So we had talked to, we had done the community survey and then we had spoken with Lori, I think she talked with her group and then the next piece was to meet with um, the individual communities to do additional um, engagement or have conversations around that and then that was right before COVID. So. Okay. Yeah. So it's on hold. On hold. Am I it running it or is he? I don't know. No. You are. Oh. Go ahead. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. Yeah. Councillor or Mayor. We're an open and yeah. yeah. chair. Yeah. This is, it might not be the best time, but I was wondering about an update on our Indigenous uh, advisor. Has that question been filled or? Um, we can't speak about that. Uh, Heather, can you provide a high level? It has not been filled officially. Um, the, can, the candidate is. Uh, Still, we, yeah, we, they're yeah. just still considering the role. Okay, I can, provi I can provide a fuller update on Wednesday. Please. Thanks. Yep. Okay, <coughs> would ever like to go next? Councillor Brian there. And go ahead. Or Poirier. Okay. <laughs> I've been sitting for three hours, so. Yeah, okay. Sit so another uh, half an hour. All right. Um, these are like not in particular order. I guess my number one here, I put the downtown ambassador program. Yeah. Um, just because I think. I think there was a shot at it last year. I don't know how successful it was, but I uh, 
I just really think that that can be a big, big piece of the, you know, our downtown success. And I, I look at the, uh, and it's very different, Winnipeg Police have a cadet program. And they're, they're clearly identified in uniforms. Uh, <coughs> they, um, they have certain authorities. We wouldn't have that. But nonetheless, I think you could, if you, if you got the right uh, the demographic, the right cohort, like I think a lot of uh, police foundations, students, maybe you know, sociology students, give them a dress them professionally in the type of a uniform with uh, uh, specific training, specific roles. You could even, you know, you could even have, I'm sure, our community police officers can give them some, some, some pointers, some direction, some, you know, some, to do some training for them. I think that would have a, have a big impact. And I, and I and so secondly, uh, keeping with that, I, I, I mentioned uh, open our street markets. I, I worked, uh, I, did, I actually worked uh, at, all of the markets when the main street was closed, mm -hmm. and it was very successful. Um, I think the, what I got was there was an appetite for, for, to, to do it more often, and even include two blocks of uh, uh, not only Main Street but the block in front of um, Boston Pizza, like the whole downtown area. Mm -hmm. I thought it was uh, it had lots of potential, and I guess when I talk about the uh, the downtown ambassador program, people, uh, you know, I was working and people were coming up by boat. And they were being harassed by people down at the harbor front, you know, being uh, uh, harassed for money. I think maybe our home had a, a cooling station set up down at the harbor front, and it was full of a bunch of drunk people that I, uh, I threatened to arrest a few of them because they were publicly intoxicated. So you had this dynamic where you had this great event happening downtown, and then you had this counterproductive thing happening at the harbor front, and they were really, you know, super, they, they didn't compliment each other at all. So I, I thought if you had a, a, an ambassador, you know, a program where people could, uh, uh, you know, es escort people out or just be a presence in the downtown. I thought the two of them fit well. But I had a lot of, uh, I got a lot of feedback about the open air markets, how successful they were, and, and people that were hoping that they would be ex even expanded more. So I put those two together. Um, I, and then I, I, I did put it up here, I will after, but I said a Henny Pen Lane beautification project. I've said this before a couple of times. Um, when Jeff Port was here, I mentioned that. His eyes kind of lit up. He said, even from a planning point of view, planner's point of view. Um, I've talked to, I brought this up at the Biz, um, and I've also brought it up at, to, uh, at the detachment. And I know uh, Staff Sergeant Jim Neal said it's not a beautification project, but he said that the OBP want to take over Henny Penn Lane. They want to own that because historically it's been, a, you know, it's been a catalyst for all kinds of violent crime, drug dealing. It's really in our downtown core, so if we can if we can expand kind of the ownership of that, and again, that's in keeping with the, with the concept of SEPTED, it's it's a theory of ownership, so if we can do that, and, and we can uh, call it a beautification project, call it what we want, uh, just try and reclaim any of that lane. And then I agree with Councilor Chase about the uh, the, the um, snowmobile strategy in the downtown corridor. Mm -hmm. I was involved in that with Commercial City Police, I, I did uh, snowmobile control. And we talked a lot about the down, the, the corridor through down, and how that would look because of the dangerous ice conditions. You, you'd have to have a bridge of some sort. It's not uh, beyond the realm of possibility, but it would take you know, some efforts and some uh, some funding and, and a will to do it. But any public-private partnership would be great. Yep, yeah, yeah. But keep, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of uh, uh, elements of play there because mm -hmm. individual you know, snowmobiles are loud. And you get kids driving with, uh, you know, with uh, cans or whatever mufflers. You're going to get complaints from from in residential areas. So just be prepared to to navigate all those issues when you when you look at a downtown corridor. But I agree with Councilor Chase. I think the benefits are really a lot of, uh, way any risks. And I think it's a it's a market that really uh, it's untapped here in Kenora. I think it's got great potential, uh, especially with Manitoba being so close to you know, the U.S. So those are my main ones. I mentioned. Uh, you know, the trail counters, that's kind of a throw in, it's $3,000. But I, I really believe in um, data informing, informing uh, our uh, projects and strategies. So I think that that could have a that could have value. But those are kind of my main ones. I, I think, uh, yeah, I'd really like to see the downtown ambassador program um, uh, you know, reimagined in some way. And as I said, we, we can draw on partnerships with uh, service or you know, cross-training and, and I've done, you know, I've done, or I've done some of those uh, situational awareness training mm -hmm. uh, uh, um, 
like uh, opportunities with the city. So I think you can train those ambassadors and that type of thing. But they don't, they don't have to be cadets, so to speak, but they can just train them with some, like mock up around. Yeah, so yeah. Councilor Brady, just want to let you know, like we have a Law 70 ambassador program. The big issue that we, we and we're going to give a presentation to this on council. Yep. Um, I, I think it's important we, we sit down and take a step back and say, like if you recall, the, um, the group down on the harbor front sort of provided notice, and so we sort of tried to recoup that money from the contract with the um, harbor town laborers and put that back into the program. And maybe we could have made different choices or tried things differently or invested a little bit differently. And so we want to have a conversation with council about sort of how we envision the program and maybe some options, including you know cadets or auxiliary officers and yep. some of those types of things that are available to us. Um, I just want you to know we haven't lost sight of that. We kind of have three arms of you know the ambassador program, and the big one that last year we had the issue with was sort of around tourism and the lack of staff. Yeah, we we could not get staff, so we're hoping better story there this year. But I just want you to know, presentation coming to council, and we have not lost sight of it, and we do think that it's important. So that is on the radar. Yeah, I'm not being critical of the way it was, no. you know, because there's various reasons, as you said, just finding staff was difficult. Various reasons. I I just think it's. That's great that we're going to reimagine it and look at it again. So great, and that um, <coughs> labor cost for the ambassador program is built into the 2023 operating budget. So the placeholders there at HR has started um, their recruiting uh, early this year in January. So to try and get ahead of things, and we're even going out and reaching out to the various uh, cottage associations because, of course, they'll have kids and grandkids that will be coming out and wanting to work here for the summer. So we're doing what we can to really spread the word and get as many people uh, engaged as possible. Go ahead. I think Councillor Bernie's point shouldn't be lost though that if it was targeted, the strategy uh, job ads were targeted to people with some knowledge or experience in dealing with, you know, the certain situations that they might, may come up with. I think would be strategic, more strategic than putting somebody in news. Yep. Just thinks it's about chatting people up on the street. Yeah. That's not what it is. Yep. <coughs> and HR has that lens for sure when they're looking at recruiting. You're up. Well, first of all, thanks for the opportunity to do this because I, I know for a lot of years, um, when we talked about like the Municipal Accommodations Act, we want to keep the politics out of it and have staff come back with it. So thank you very much, because uh, I wasn't sure I always agreed with that. Um, I, I went back through the list and through discussions we've had over the last couple of years, and uh, like my big thing right now is Mount, Mount Everton. We have a placeholder in there for a partnership, and I think it, I think it said it was deferred to 24. No, no so it's, it's in for 2023. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, but they need a lot of help out there. They, uh, I mean, they, they get little bits and pieces of grants, um, but they have a lot of uh, huge capital projects that are, are required to keep that going. And one of these days, the 1962 lift is not, they're not going to be able to find parts for it. Yeah. Um, and it's such a beautiful hill. And uh, they've done so much work with the trails. Uh, and then there's the lighting now, and I know that we're contributing some money towards that also. So I, I think that's our, that to me, that's a gem here in, in the city. Instead of recreating more infrastructure, uh, we need to begin to look after what we have. And I, I think they really, we can play a role in that. Uh, and we don't need to use uh, tax dollars. We can use you know municipal accommodation tax dollars. Uh, to achieve that, so they're gonna they're gonna be. I'm surprised they didn't come here for a, a larger ask already, but I'm assuming it will come in, in the near future. And the other one, I go back to uh, the Harbour Front because I know we've injected some money into uh, um, uh, like McCall Park and that. And you know what I think about not finishing what we've started there with the pergola and that. It was just. You know, when we talk about getting things done, uh, I think we need to finish that piece off before we continue on. But I, I think we need to look at every year having, uh, and hopefully with more uh, accommodations to tax over the coming years, um, 
you know, we'll, we'll grow that, that uh, pot of money up, but continue to um, whatever it is in the harbor front development and, and a continuation there. And I'm trying to recreate a whole bunch of new projects that we can't afford, uh, but these are ones that we have on the books and we need help with them in any manner we can. Uh, we can't just rely on the taxpayers mm -hmm. and we can't continue to rely on getting funding from other levels of government for these projects year in and year out, year in and year out. That's, you know, at, at some point that's not going to be viable anymore. So if we need to inject some money into some of the development, I, I think that would be a great place for uh, um, the MAP program. So that's my, uh, I, I did too, because uh, I don't want to create any more. Excellent. Thank you. Um, one of the things that we, well thanks for, does anyone have questions about anybody's projects that they would like to ask upon reflection, or ideas? Everyone good? Just have one sort of comment or observation, uh, and it's to do with Councillor Bernie's suggestion. I think it's a great initiative to have the ambassador program, but I have a bit of a concern if it's, um, branded as a place for cadets or for like, I'm worried that I don't want it to be seen as enforcement of some kind and I think that's something that can be a barrier in dealing with certain individuals and vulnerable segments of the population who can create some trouble downtown that I'm just worried that you know we're, we're trying to hire people to not you know to be the police without being the police like that's not I think what the intention is, and I just want to make that comment. I just I really kind of concerned about um, yeah. it being it being seen by certain people as some type of enforcement when they arrive to help tourists out. Like that's not. Uh, I don't think that's our intention. And I, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, I, I think that when uh, Roberta comes and does the presentation on the ambassador program, you'll see it's it's basically a three-legged stool. Uh, you know, there's the tourism aspect of it, there is the, the cleaning part of it, and then there's just kind of moving people along uh, from particular areas uh, if there's an event going on or something. And maybe it's just as simple as being the feet on the street saying, hey, you know, they have a relationship with Mockwater OPP. Uh, Detachment Commander Duggan was very supportive of the program and, you know, said he could do walk-alongs and that sort of thing. So I think that uh, somewhere there's a mix there. Uh, that we can, you know, work together to, to deal with some of these issues. Just kind of being, get out ahead of it rather than, you know, reacting to it. Yeah. 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 And, I, and I agree with the station. I agree with you as well, Councilor. I, I, I guess I'm saying is, yeah, Manitoba may be a bad example because they have, they have um, legislative authority that they're cadets, right? So it's totally different. But I guess what I'm tar talking about targeting is just the maturity level, maybe. Yeah. You know, like a, a university student. I, I said, I said sociology it doesn't have to be police foundations, but somebody that's uh, has the maturity level to deal with, you know, those complicated uh, um, potential uh, situations. Really, that has the, the level of being able to, you know, if someone is. I'm thinking more like a macro type thing where yeah. they're they're good at problem solving. That's all I meant, but it sounds like Stace has this figured out. So, but I, it's a point well taken. I agree with you. They're not going to be, you know, they're not going to be, they're not um, cadets or auxiliaries or no, no. Just for everyone's benefit, can we speak to the support that we would have given to Mount Evergreen before in the past, just so that everybody's aware? Uh, so back in 2019, uh, when Glick was one of the commission members, probably would have remembered, we offered some support to Mount Evergreen uh, to not only de uh, develop a four-season destination plan, so to Mayor Poirier's point, they are looking at becoming a four-season destination and not necessarily just a, it is a, it is a crown jewel, um, as well as some uh, uh, operating support. Um, and then, <coughs> so we helped them develop that plan, we, we applied for some funding or helped them apply for some funding for that, so they have develop the four season destination plan. And now these are the next steps. So the, the $50,000 contribution you see here from Mount Evergreen and, and $50,000 for Nordic, um, those are to help support their applications in for big projects. Uh, so the Nordic lighting, I think, city so the, the number was on the Nordic lighting. It's uh, $50,000 on their overall project. Their overall project. Oh, uh, uh, phase one, I think, was getting 
it was up there like close to a million bucks or something. Yeah, like so that. they asked for a hundred thousand dollar contribution from the city of Kenora from the municipal accommodation tax. Um, recognizing that that's a big ask in one year, we had looked at sparsing it over two years. Similar to Mount Evergreen, they're looking at doing an operation center. Um, so this is their first step into replacing that chalet. They need a place to put the the groomer and do some work and things like that and have a temporary solution for the chalet. So they're looking at applying for Fednor and NHFC um, and they have to have a contribution to that as well. So that was their ask. And again, this is another $100,000 ask that is being sparse in the two years. So 50 and 50, so. Um, somebody put pocket park and I don't remember that being discussed. I think I put that up there. Okay, and, and again, my keeping my my uh, thinking is just as, as Mayor Poirier said about McLeod Park. We talked about about doing it. I just feel it's, it's a priority. I'd like to, you know, I'd like to move it forward. Okay. So, Megan, why don't you provide an update to everyone on the park? Sure. So we have uh, the detailed design work completed for the park. We've ordered the washroom. It's near completion. Um, we had gone through a competitive process to source a mural artist for that building. So the washroom itself will be wrapped in four different mural panels, um, which is really exciting. Um, so uh, that is being manufactured in Quebec. It is near completion. Um, the next steps will be for us to service the site and then they'll come in, install the washroom, and then we'll complete the landscaping this spring. So we had originally hoped that we would do the landscaping and the washroom install in the fall, but we were not able to find uh, a contractor or someone to do the work, so we had to push it a little bit. But um, that project is still on schedule to hopefully be completed before the spring. And it, it, as a project, it's one of those things where we took the budget as far as we could. There is the potential, maybe from a VAT tax perspective, to add some extra money there just in terms of the finishing the landscaping. But, but uh, it, it will happen for sure uh -huh. uh, in the spring. And that washroom is, I think it's almost ready to be shipped right now, is it not? Yeah, it's very, I think they're just wrapping the mural right now. Yeah, I think we could take that space back, right? We can use that for something positive. Well, and, and you've got the wind that building going right across the street yeah. too, so it's mm -hmm. a marriage of services. Yeah. Or, and uh, there's a small office on the back of the self clean washroom, and we've spoken to Makwa about maybe them uh, using that as an office for uh, sort of a, in the field office. Mm -hmm. So, do you have a question? Just finishing up with you, Josh. So, year $50,000, this is this year two of a two year commitment? Year one, sorry. Year one. Year that's really yeah. So, year two. So, we're in for one. another 50 next year. Yeah. yeah. So, and um, so we know that uh, Nordic has received their monies. Um, so that one hundred thousand dollars over two years from the city, uh, they can match that and get three hundred. So that's four hundred thousand dollars towards that project. For us, it's great because it now, um, you know, that was a, something that you couldn't use when it was dark, and now it's going to be lit up. And their phase one is complete, and they've got a broader thing. So now they can start to do events, nighttime events, and that. So it's a pretty big deal for us. Okay, and now finishing up with me, and that's a four season. Washer all year round. Yes. We were asked about the one with the volume, so that Oh, repeat. yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. It is well, manufactured to withstand Canadian winters. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> and I, I don't know that it's to uh, replace no, no, the building right installment. No, no. Right but we were asked to leave that one open year round, but this one will take care of. Yeah, and the pavilion is open year round. 24 7. Not 24 7. Because yeah, we don't have staff, right? Mm -hmm. So, and McLeod, like a lot of our outside washrooms are uh, seasonal washrooms, right? Like the cloud park, yeah, and that we turn off the water. Mm -hmm. I'm just going through here to make sure. Anybody have an idea what an arts and culture master plan might cost? Remember when we did our planning session in 2019, mm -hmm. we actually put approximately the budget. Mm -hmm. I, I, I would say 50 to 75. No, I would say 75 states. 50 to 75. 75 would be enough. No, Did Loak not do a plan? I mean, it wasn't community wide, but it was arts wide. I don't know. I think Loak did one. Yeah, so there, I think there was one from that. like 2011. Yeah. yeah. Like, was that one? And what do we say for uh, Dutch Road? 50,000? Yeah. Is that what you figured? That's what I have written down. Mm -hmm. Do that in between or just. That's done. So um, the last 
thing that we're going to do is we're going to do a voting exercise. So you have uh, in front of you dots. Everybody gets uh, five votes. And uh, if you could uh, limit yourself to the five votes, we'll see what kind of rises to the top from a priority standpoint. And then after that, we're just going to roll everything up and take it away, and then we'll come back to you with a melt of what we would have thought we would have done in 2023 and um, you know uh, the work that was uh, done today. And sometimes what we do with these things is we push them off into subsequent years just because of budget and that sort of thing. Another big thing that we do when we evaluate these, these things is our ability to deliver. We only have a certain amount of staff time, so some of these projects, for example, the one we were just talking about, the Arts and Culture Master Plan, that's something that you would just go third party and, and do it that way. Uh, and maybe that's something that we can start in late. 2023, spread it in 2024, and then that way we can pay for the project. So we kind of juggle with the, uh, the schedule of the calendar a little bit, also the uh, uh, what staff can reasonably uh, do over a course of a period of time. So can everybody just do a vote, please? Are they color coded for a reason? No, they're not. They're just, it's a volume thing. It's just, it's just the way the package came. And take your time. Uh, 2.1 and 2.2 seem to be functions of the economic development. So how did you end up on the MAD tax list? Well, MAD is economic development and our strategy is under economic development together as well. Right. So if you read them, they sound like I mean, we are doing some of that already. I'm not sure why I think I think some years did you did you categories and some years we do labor services. You just yeah, it's all about balance, right? So maybe we want to just shift on the special bit, like the vacant lands. We can take money to pay for advertising. We should start doing something like that. Like, like, there's different ways we can do this, but I hear you. Let me read this. Yeah, right. We should call. Well, you know, we should actually probably call Zeddy Bowers and say, "Who's the municipal politics grandmother?" Zeddy Bowers. I'm saying we should sponsor our. From the beginning, we're talking about. Is she off today? Ah, uh, no, she's right in. I think mine's on for us. Oh, I sent her to Texas for She just left. Yeah, she's writing letters. Writing letters? Yeah. Oh. Uh, but I said you better just uh, watch so you can hear what their thoughts are. Hopefully uh, yeah, she can hear over there. I'm just not sure if the mic's picking up very close. I'm trying to, like, I, I'm, write, I'm writing this because I'm reading this. Like, Thank you. I know you're. You're writing so, it, so I'm uh, reading it going, as you say, I, 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 and then I'm like, well, but it is yeah, okay, coming well, from you. Well, we can take that. Well, that's the topic, like, options, like, e-more folks. I don't know. Grade 6 level. For sure. I'm trying. No, but I, I'm just, I'm just, I put it in, then I take it out. Anyway, and I made a comment here just to say, just to ensure it doesn't sound like we just like counsel yeah, exactly. as the final okay, say, so I've added in okay. some things to no, say. That's good. Like that's why I wanted you to make that. Thank you. Uh, I just, what are you looking for? So yeah, Councillor Mockery, I think if we were if we were really targeting some specific sectoral work, yes, that would fall more in the two point two space, right?
big winner. Cool. It was more. It was more than seven dots on that card. Gee. <laughs> Strategic. All You're not supposed to go up there and look yet. <laughs> we got nine council votes. Well, people could put more than one vote. Oh, I see. So we got Big winners are the Black Sturge and Bolt Watch. Our Evergreen probably is showing up in two locations, so it's uh, and also the lots of dots. We've got the uh, Snowmobile, cross down corridor, big one. Got a lot of bolts. Community art mural, crosswalk installation. And then the study in terms of uh, the lift into uh, the river. Also got a couple of bolts. That's from the Lake Village to the Yeah, there used to be one where the old mill was. Yes, back in the day. And, um, that's actually when the high water came, it was actually flowing over there into the river and the road kind of washed out there. So um, that's it guys. The whole purpose of today was to just sort of tell you uh, the planning that we would have done so far. Uh, we're going to take all of this into consideration and as part of the, uh, when you see the operating budget, you're actually going to see uh, what we've come up with in terms of the projects for 2023 and the uh, associated budget. And uh, that's there you go. And so nice. what we want to do today. It is your day. If you do want to talk any further on the program, we do have the time. But if you guys want to cut and uh, go back to your day jobs. Or? I just have one sort of comment to make. I mean, obviously, we all recognize how important this program is for economic development and lessening the burden on our local resident repairs yeah. assessment. Um, I just want to be mindful of what things we can do to enhance hotels, hotel operators, what spaces, underutilized lands might be available for more hotel development. I think there's a huge need for more hotels in this community. Yes. I think that's obvious to everybody in the room, we know this. Yeah. And I think we should be mindful as a municipality in terms of what are the things that we can legitimately do to see more hotels being developed uh, in this community. One of the things that we would have spoken about in the past, which when we went through the voting exercise, was a feasibility study for hotels in Kenora. Uh, so that was one of the projects that was looked at and it didn't hit the, uh, the list just because um, it was, you know, relative to going through a prioritized session, it wasn't seen as a priority at that time. So is well, that seen as a priority? I, I think it should be a priority. I mean, we've obviously seen in the last few years with states of emergency with fires and with pandemic and even emergencies in other communities that other houses are used for as shelter as emergency housing and it really affects the supply for tourists. So I mean, uh, we have a need for obviously housing uh, and shelter and all that stuff, but the, the accommodations market uh, is really underserved here. It's, it's a barrier to our economic development. Okay. Jason, I think we have talked about potentially looking at that as a component of the investment attraction project as well. Yes, as a specific sector, absolutely. <laughs> Oh, uh, Councillor Fandelli. Thank you. I also think um, it's worth putting on the radar something that was brought up at Roma in one of the um, training sessions that I went to is about short term rental registrations. And it was something that, based on the panel who was there, um, it's been addressed sort of once it's already become a problem within a lot of municipalities. But I think they're sort of at the point where some municipalities have adopted best practice. I would look to Prince. Edward County probably as a um, really good resource for that. Um, uh, but in regards to adding to your mat tax as a source of income, that's an opportunity there as well as other um, investor, uh, sorry. And that is on our radar and we're actually working on that as we speak. Yeah, the planning department has three files that they're looking at to bring forward to council, that's one of them. Okay. And so you'll see that in the next 60 days. Go ahead. Our air 
EMDs included in that text? No, that's, that's, that's exactly that's what, what yeah, about. yeah. So it's, it's, it's excluded. There are municipalities that have it included and the uh, process to uh, collect the revenues and come back to the city are, are fairly similar. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, just uh, on uh, Councillor Chase's uh, uh, words about uh, a like future co or future hotels or whatever. Uh, I think we need to be mindful of the work that's already been done. On there, there are a couple that I mean that are quite active. Uh, so before we go out and start, and I guess we can promote more. But uh, what I'd like to see uh, again, if we could, is we used to get that update on a monthly, or every, it could be even every two months, on things like that. Those types of projects, what the outreach is, uh, what outreach has happened, kind of where we're at, where it sits in the planning. Team and, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, but we don't need to call it Team Canora. Just like even like um, we can call it new assessment or whatever. I don't care. Um, but it uh, it would be nice to see that, and especially for the new council, because I used to find that invaluable to get that list, because you'd forget about um, you know projects or developers or ideas that were kind of on the books and people were actually spending money to advance them yeah. so that would be uh that would be a good thing and then you, we can see where we're, our shortcomings are no i really appreciate that your worship you know what we've, we've kind of lost that um we'll get back to it yeah and, and kyle and i did have a conversation about it i did have that meeting with planning and building last week so uh the planning in this we were going to come forward at council in, in camera and give you that update uh, Councillor Koch. Thanks. I just wanted to, and I know this has already been done and, and is done ongoing, but I really want to highlight the importance of when something is funded by the MAT tax that we're communicating that really, really well, potentially including an explanation of what that means, what MAT means, um, because I've, like, I still spend a lot of time explaining that a lot of the things that, that you guys are doing in your programs are funded by this, uh, and it's not from from the ratepayers, and so just remains important. So, Councillor, I'm, I'm working on an article for the minor, that'll help. And I'm actually wondering, like, you know, like when Stephen Harper and Trudeau, they put the big signs, like, in front of, you know, like, like should we think about yes. something, like, would that be a good, is that a good plan? Mm -hmm. You know, this project is supported by, yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. That, that was my plan with Evergreen and uh, the Nordic Trails, because uh, again, this budget has to be approved but it is to get appropriate signage and I, I agree that that's what we should be doing in all cases because um, you want that constant visibility to just see the impact that you're having in the community so that's a great way to do it. Well you want locals to see the connection between tourism and being good for our community too. That's their, they need to have a positive relationship with tourists and visit this community. Yep, good point for sure. Mm -hmm. Can we bring up another subject? No, I'm just looking at the time, you know, so that's good. Um, so, do you have another? No, discuss um, it. So, uh, if there's no other questions, then I guess we can uh, move on the agenda to adjournment. Oh, very good. 218. Uh, 218. <laughs> I'm sure everybody's. After last week, we deserve it. <laughs>